Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Orsted. This game is releasing soon, has just released, depends on when the video comes out, I actually don't know, but it's a pretty cool, interesting game where you can, like, generate different maps, like, I can generate, like, this is a gigantic map that I generated, I can generate a tiny map, which looks a little bit like this. I know, I think it'll be kind of fun if we generate a huge map, I'm just gonna play around on that and have a little bit of fun with it, because it looks like it has, like, you know, different continents and regions and stuff, but it's, it's kind of it's interesting it's different it's weird it's like somewhere between a city builder and an idle game so it's got like this really cool vibe that i like because i'm actually a huge fan of things like tower defenses i'm a huge fan of idle games i like that the game is like hey you here's all the controls flick the camera and then i want like reset my camera you know it's it's cool you got like full camera controls you got all sorts of stuff it's like square grid based you got trees that you can click on you can chop them for wood you got water the goal here and it, it gives you goals and then rewards for doing those goals so for here we got the mysterious heart of power now or needs to be built near wood as far as I remember. Hmm. Where do we want our, like, city center to be? I mean, I kind of wish I could build it on this little weird island, but this feels a little bit cramped. Could be a good farming zone. So I kind of like the idea of building near this big open plains over here because we have a good mixture of, like, grassland and plains and forest. The other thing is, if we're planning an actual city city, then you want to build this at the mouth of the river, right? Because that's where the, that's where cities are founded, is in the, you know, around the mouth of a river. So let, let's pick a, a mouth of the river to settle at. Oh, this one has some charm. Yeah, I like this one a lot, actually. So I reckon I'll settle. I'll, I'll kind of put the heart of my settlement, like, right there. That's fine. Now, it's going to be surrounded by this path. And these are your little, like, meeple people, kind of little residents, right? The game will periodically give you goals. So, for example, they want me to chop, you know, seven trees and I get a little bit of money. You do get wisdom over over time, this tower, I believe, gives you wisdom based on like the quality of your town. So if I press C, I can now chop down this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree. I'll focus on chopping the big ones because I believe the smaller ones can grow and then spawn new trees as well. So focus on chopping the nearby stuff. And then we've got a forest over here that we can get access to as well. So they want me to build a path. I guess I'll build a chunk of path right there. There it is. Now path costs one or I guess wisdom, one wisdom and this allows us to build a stockpile, like a wood stockpile. So I could put a wood stockpile here in the center of my town. Like, boom, there it is. There's a wooden stockpile in the center of my town. It can be used to move things around. Bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. There it is, stock 10 wood. And so the goal is my little villagers here will go out to these trees and they will cut them down, collect the wood, and then go deposit them back in the stockpile here that stores the wood. You can see what resources are kind of quote unquote assigned to it and then what villagers are assigned to the task. You can also see if you look carefully, the villagers actually walk fast faster on road, which is quite nice. I don't remember if there's a speed up button. Yeah, there is. So I'm going to speed up the game a little bit just so we can get through like the first few quests. So there we go. We finished that quest and now we can build houses and our people want two houses. I kind of like the idea of maybe this over here could be like a small industrial kind of sector like that and then I could have housing somewhere out here so I'll, I'll put a couple houses right there and there and those are the two houses we need to build. Now a house takes three wood and 44 ore to build. Every house that you build takes more ore than the house you built previously so it does get more expensive from what I remember. Let's go ahead and chop this three tree down which has now allowed us to build the water collector. If I recall correctly if you provide these houses with their desired resources you'll get better happiness which means more ore. So let's go ahead and build the water collector. There we go, utilities. This provides water to nearby houses. And I think I could build this somewhere over here. Now, this does require a river slash lake. And I think this would be perfectly reasonable to plop down right here because it will provide water in the region. Boom. We'll pop a little road there. I like these little two by two kind of roads. I may as well place a couple more houses because I believe when you have an excess of housing, you get more citizens. So I'll kind of like overbuild just a little bit of housing to get more citizens. Now, we also have the ability to build wheat farms. Let's go ahead in here to the farming area. And wheat, I believe it requires a certain distance from water, but also road. I like this wheat farming area. So I'm going to get started here. I'll just do two, two little wheat farms. I think you need this green terrain to make wheat farms. That green terrain plus water. But it also needs to be a certain distance from road. So we're out of wood and that means I'm going to go ahead and start chopping down some more of the trees over here. So I'll just pick some of the bigger trees and my hope is that by, by, by carefully trimming the forest we leave space for more trees to regrow. So I'll kind of just like speed this up. My hope is that my editors will actually do, when I do like static shots like this, that they'll just speed up the gameplay. And the idea there is that, you know, while we're waiting for things to build, you could still watch the stuff. Let's go ahead and build a little path over this way. My people seem to have gotten stuck on their mission. I guess it's because I have nowhere to send wood. But now I have people farming, right? And they're producing wheat. And that wheat should get distributed to these houses as long as I build a granary, which will store the wheat for these houses. Let's go ahead and chop that tree down. That tree got chopped down. And now we can place the granary right there. 
That feels nice. We did just reach 10 population. Now, do, do remember, every time you build a house, it gets more expensive to build a house. So that is something we are contending with. But more villagers is important, even if they will like eat up more of the food. So getting those houses laid down pretty quick is, is quite important. The more of any building, honestly, the more expensive they get. But we do have a path going out to this forest now, so we can retrieve the wood on the ground pretty quick. There is a thing you can do later on in the game, like you can transfer wood from one of these stockpiles to the other. But I don't think I've unlocked that ability yet. And my ore is leveling up constantly as I do these quests. And we will occasionally get randomly generated quests, right? There is the progression quests, and then there's the randomly generated quests. So like right now, I got to build a wheat market. That's a progression quest because it has no time limit. And so the wheat market, I think, is best situated right here. Pop it right there. And it should pick up the wheat and distribute it to the um, locations. I'm also going to go ahead and build a lumber camp with these two lumber camps in range of each other. And the idea here is that any wood that I chop down over here will get deposited into this wood stockpile. And then eventually I'll be able to transfer the wood from that stockpile to the other ones. We are going to go ahead and do a little bit more chopping. We're up to 16 housing. And I think the happiness uh, dictates how quickly citizens arrive. If you played something like Northgard, you should be familiar with that kind of mechanic, which is, you know, it's something I quite enjoy. Okay, perfect. The lumber jock has, has been unlocked. We now have a wheat mark. So what's happening here is food is getting created thanks to water in these wheat farms. That food, that wheat is getting deposited deposited in this granary. The granary is then distributing food to the wheat market. And then this wheat market is distributing the food to these houses. And you can see when these houses have wheat, because they have access to wheat and water, the happiness goes up. The happier we are, the more wisdom we get, the happier we are, the more citizens we get. So let's go ahead and move on to building a lumberjack. Now, lumberjacks automatically chop nearby trees, which is, you know, kind of a fun thing. So I want, I want this lumberjack to be in range of this stockpile. I also have a quest to reach a higher level of population. So I'm going to go ahead and build a little road like this. And I will add an extra pair of houses. So I can keep my, my population growing. So they want me to build a lumberjack, but they also want me to build a forester. And the forester plants trees. So if we look at the area that this lumberjack covers, and then we look at the area the forester covers, it basically covers over to like here, right? And so these things overlap. You know, you could put four four foresters around and they'll roughly kind of like coincide and cover each other. But I think there's a dude working in this to create wood. And there's, now there's a dude that in here that plants trees, which is quite fun. So the overlap between this water tower and the wheat market is like the important thing that we need to keep in mind. And we need to reach a population of 20 to, to, to get the sawmill. And you can see here, we just got a quest to build a house. And since the house costs 400 and the quest gives us 200, it's kind of like a pretty profitable venture to uh, do these quests. Go ahead and build this little farm thing out here. I don't know how to tell like how well fed these houses are, but I'm going to presume that they're not perfectly well fed. So I'm going to go ahead and plant down two more wheat farms. And that completed the quest, getting me a little bit more wisdom, wisdom that I can use to expand my town. Oh, hey, uh, we found a wisdom geode. Let's go ahead and harvest that. Yoink. Spark of inspiration. Bonus based on your current wisdom. Very nice. Keep an eye out for those things appearing. I tell you what, as like a science experiment, I'm going to go ahead and build out to here. I'm going to demolish this and I'm going to go ahead and place a forester and we can kind of figure out like, what does this actually do? What does this radius mean? So we'll, we'll figure that out. I got to reach 25 population. That'll take a little while. Oh yeah, look, it's already grown stuff. Nice. Oh wow. Yeah, it grows pretty quick. I mean, we do have access to bridges. So I'm going to go ahead and demolish this and get a refund. I'll place another forester here. Although I might want to place that one tile out. Tell you what, let me go ahead and demolish this. They want me to build a house. They're quite expensive right now, but I will get 800 if I do that. This doesn't have water, but that's okay. You will have water, so that is okay. We can cross the river now, which I'm quite excited about. Although we don't need to do that just yet. They do want me to build a sawmill. So I think I'll put a sawmill right across from this lumber yard right here, this stockpile. We can start to produce, you know, all that lovely stuff. Oh, this is like defertilize the area. Interesting. Oh, the sawmill produces wisdom and some sort of extra good or oh, no no no! it p produces wisdom and causes pollution oh interesting okay that's kind of an interesting idea very nice let's get enough foresters to support this so i'll get another forester in a moment hoping that we can produce enough trees in the area to you know keep things churning i've got two more houses on route which is perfect and i'm having a great time okay so my quest is to build a house i can i can pop a house down right there they want me to build an ocean dock which i just got access to this is a fishing thing it produces max requires ocean requires path so let's see what we can do let's say we built this road straight down we got ourselves a fishing boat it needs to like face the ocean so if I do this now I can place it here and its work area is like in this zone if you know what I mean okay they want me to reach 40 population I'm gonna go ahead and maybe place another water tower here and then maybe another granary we don't need to know we don't need the other granary just yet what we do need is the wheat market 
I can do like a similar overlap thing. All right, I'll do the wheat market here. That way these services are replicated. And I'll add another couple of wheat farms just to increase the amount of food that we're producing. And I, I suspect that there will be something I can place in the center to make these more productive. So that's kind of why I'm doing it that way. But we are making plenty of, you know, resources to make houses now. And so that is the plan. Although I don't want to use up this delicious fertile soil. So I will try not to build as many houses as is entirely sensible. Current quest is to get up to 30, uh, let's get up to 40 population to get the tax collector and that'll get me 10k wisdom. My tower thing over here is looking pretty cool. The mysterious heart of power. I also need to build an ocean fishery. We have the ocean dock which actually produces the mackerel and the ocean fishery stores it. So I'm going to place that right there. Boom. And that'll store the resources we need. Oh, it's fall now. Interesting. I didn't realize there were se seasons. So my quest is to stock 100 wheat. And in order to do that, I think I'm going to need a lot more wheat farms. So I'm going to get started just making as many wheat farms as I can because that seems like a pretty sensible thing to do. I would also love to get myself another forester to keep the tree production nice and high, but I don't have the wisdom for that yet. Let's slow down. We just got a whole bunch of quests. Okay, first thing I want to do is I definitely want to get this extra forester. Let's do that. Ooh, we're unlocking policies. We almost have the population goal and our quest is to build a house. We also need to build a fish market and stock 100 wheat. There's going to be a process that we're kind of working on here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get enough resources. I think I will to be able to build a house. We did also unlock the tax collector, which is really cool. It lowers happiness, but multiplies wisdom game. Now that sounds like my kind of item. So we'll build that house and hopefully that'll get built in time for this quest. We're also going to unlock the well. Now the well should allow us to get water to places where I currently can't get them, which will make you know, farming, housing, all that stuff a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and demolish this tile. I actually quite like when I'm playing these games now is to do just like do unhinged designs for my cities, like just have random little quirks. So everything doesn't look completely regular and standard, like just throw a couple farms where they don't belong. You know what I'm saying? And so hopefully this house can get built. I don't think we're actually having wood fast enough so I'm gonna go ahead and add maybe another lumberjack across the road and then I'm just gonna tell my people hey go chop a whole lot of wood for me cut it all down get it all and then I'm gonna harvest this little you know wisdom geode and that will get me a boost of my wisdom till 7x my wisdom gains for a few minutes so we'll speed this up I can't remember if I can deactivate this but yeah we got all the wood churning and we completed the quest we built the tax collector now it's giving us a huge multiplier to our things we also have a frenzy going this one 7x all wisdom gains so this minus five household happiness so as long as they have access to wheat and water, they'll be okay and people will still come and we'll get a small boost to our wisdom gains. Let's go ahead and keep expanding our farming districts. We've completely deforested this area, but we will continuously reforest it thanks to these foresters. It's quite nice. This stockpile is very full. So we need to build a fish market to distribute you know, food. Green, green is where they'll pick up resources from and blue is their work area. Interesting. I don't know what that means for the forester because they just produce trees. I'm going to put a forester over here where nobody else is and just see what that means. It says 25% more efficiency. So fish market, distributes trout and mackerel. So I'll just pop a little fish market over there. That'll get the fish going. What happens if I delete this? Do I get, yeah, I get the majority of the resources back. Okay, so I, I, I don't really understand the efficiency thing for those, but like, it's no big deal. It's fine. We don't need to understand everything perfectly. Do you know what I'm saying? What I would love to do is build more houses though. That is for sure. And we really want to build the well. So let's go one, two, three, four. Build a little area like this. Kind of wonky, kind of weird. It's the way I like to do it. Ask your mom. And we have 52 housing. So eight households are vacant and we will get access to the well now. I'm, I'm going to put a couple farms in there. I don't know if that's the most efficient way to do it, but I'm just going to more farms, more wheat. I want that stockpile quest done. You know what I'm saying? Oh, baby, let's harvest that wisdom geode. Kaboom. Now we get the bonus wisdom, spark of inspiration. Boom, we hit 50 population, so we get access to the well, which will allow us to place water where we don't currently have it. So what if I were to put a well right... Well, there. I'm curious as if, 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 I, if I can turn this into farmland, but the wells are super expensive. Multiplies wisdom gains. I see. So the tax collector is giving me a 27% boost to my wisdom gain thanks to all the houses in around here. So that's actually kind of nice. I think a single tax collector is the way to play it though. So I need to get to 60 population to get a coal mine. Still need to stockpile 100 wheat. And here's the thing. I can build more tax collectors the more, the more mackerel I provide. So... It does is it bad if they overlap? Like, I don't know. Like if they're right beside each other, does that matter? So currently this produces two fish per minute. Seemingly, it seems to still produce two fish per minute. So if there is an inefficiency of overlapping them, I don't see it. So let's just go to as many of these as we can get because that's going to bring our happiness up and let us tax the crap out of our population more. We got a whole dock land here and I'll put a second ocean fishery here. So I believe it's fall. Maybe it's currently fall requires spring, summer, fall. 
wall. Oh, our wheat storage. Ah, I need a second granary. Now that actually makes sense to me, is that you can only store food in a building that like you have. You can't, you can't just store it, you know what I'm saying? Place another house. We gotta get the population up to 60. Oh yeah, look at all that wheat going into that building. Oh, zoom in on that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. waves of wheat. Ooh, a little, uh, a little nugget I can grab. Yoink. I could probably go to another sawmill. That will give us a significant boost on our wisdom income. Um, we're gonna go ahead and slap down a few houses. Skadoosh. Well, I say a few houses. Each house cost me like 63 wisdom. That's why I'm trying to get more of this wisdom flowing in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I've got like resources up here that's like going up by a certain percentage. These mackerel houses will like fill and then we won't be able to do nothing. All that means is I'll be able to tax harder. Oh, these tax houses are expensive. I'm going to add two more sawmills because it seems like we're just, we're just not making enough wisdom per second. Okay, it is winter giving us access to the wood furnace. No heat, which I believe... Yeah, look at that. Minus 10 happiness. So this charcoal thing that I did might not be the good move. We need a wood furnace to produce heat for our peeps. So I'll put down two wood furnaces to produce heat and I'll let time continue on. I'm probably going to add another lumberjack because they're not that expensive. All right, perfect. So this consumes one wood per minute, which means we're getting heat in and around here. These farms are blocked because it's currently winter. You can't farm in winter. My houses are happy. I would love to build another tax collector. So I'll pop a tax collector here. 19,000 percent seems pretty good. I'm going to build up this area, I think. So 19,000 percent seems like a good spot for a tax collector. So I've got a 70 percent wisdom bonus. It'll pay itself off after a while. These tax collectors are expensive as hell. Harvest a little geode. I'm hoping for a 7x all wisdom gains. Oh yes. So this is like the active part of the idle game is like harvesting those little nuggets. I'm going to go ahead and just let it run for a while. Um, we'll be back when I have a bunch of money saved up. All right, so I went and had dinner, so I'm expecting for there to be like a really long sequence of events there. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this rock, boosh, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this, boosh, because we're using up a little bit more wood than we're producing, which I don't love. So I'm going to I'm going to put the put the kibosh on that. I am curious if like should I be placing more foresters in the same area or should I be spreading them out? It's hard to know that. I'm going to spread them out a little, like so. I'm gonna put two more over here so they can get, you know, producing. Just so we can get a little bit more, like, trees going. Because I don't know what the thing is that's slowing down the lumber production in this area. My suspicion is that it's potentially the number of trees that we're generating. So I think if I get another couple of these wood producing things, it could be good. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go ahead and demolish these lumber mills. And also move this stockpile. Because I didn't like where it was positioned. So I'm gonna move it over here and I'll have three sawmills facing it. Just so the wood can be, like, picked up and produced pretty quick. I'll also, I'll fill out a little bit of path here. Seems like a totally reasonable thing. Thing to do. And I like this kind of organic feel of a city that's kind of developing here. I am going to go ahead and build some extra houses. So let's two houses there. Boop, boop. That should be enough houses to get us up over the 60 mark. And apparently we do already have a policy. Now, one of the problems we have is we actually do have negative wood. But let me tell you, what I gave your mom was positive wood. She's wood positive, or as I like to call it, PIV positive. So let's go, and uh, how much do these foresters cost now? 1.5 million. Holy shit, they got expensive fast. Okay, we should be producing a lot of trees and the wood rate should be decent. So we're going to check back in here and see how things are going. All right, so we reached 60 population, giving us a coal mine. Now, it looks like there's only coal over here in this sector and this sector and this sector. So we'll have to do a little bit of figuring out when it comes to that. Now, we also need to build a grain mill, which is kind of an interesting thing. So it converts wheat to grain. We need to build a coal mine. This will give us the grain silo. And we also need to build the monument to the forest. Now, I don't know what that is or how I build it. So we're going to have a little bit of a look around. Oh, we have a policy here. So monument of the forest, guardian of the leafy beings. So what if I put a monument of the forest here. I don't know what that did. It seems to be producing something, something that I don't fully understand. And it seems to produce faster the more lumber there is nearby. So I tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, we need to harvest pine. Oh, it creates pine. Interesting. Let's go ahead and build a nice three by three farm in here. So I'm going to build a road over to here and I'm going to put a bridge right there. Put that road in here. Then we've got this bridge connecting over here and we will come along and out. 
to here. This is kind of what I'm looking at here. Multiplies wisdom gains. Okay, interesting. Ah, so every pine tree I get in here. So what happens if I harvest a pine? Can't chop pine. But well, let's put a lumberjack over here and see what happens. Because I don't know. Okay, they want me to build a grain mill. So if I plunk a grain mill down over here, it'll scoop up the grain. Now, I don't know what that means that it's like connecting to all these things. So I'm kind of curious about that. And we'll see how the harvesting of trees goes here. Oh, looks like more trees grew. Birch? Pine? Curious. So I built a grain mill. Now I have access to the grain silo, which is this thing, which stores grain. I don't understand why this connects, like in reverse. What are you doing? You make grain and wheat. It, it's a little confusing. I get that you store wheat. What do you blew out to these things? Oh, the grain mill increases the efficiency of all this farming in a large area. Oh, okay. I really like that. That's really cool. I'm going to sell a forester so that I can explore when they get like bonus yields. Harvest a wisdom geode. Oh, okay, hello. Hello, little wisdom geode. Let me go ahead and scoop you up. What do I get? Bonus wisdom based on our current. Really nice. They want me to build a grain silo, so I'll go ahead and do that over there. It's kind of like distributed weirdly. Oh, I like when you click on the people, you can see what their houses are. That's nice. That's cute. I can harvest a pine. Boom. And it multiplies my wisdom gain. So I just unlocked a pine, which I don't fully understand. Okay. So this thing grows them regularly. And if I harvest a birch, Oh, I can place those around the town. Ah. Okay, so this is like a preser preservium. And I want pine around this thing because it seems to get multiplied 1% wisdom from a pine tree. But I don't seem to get that from birch. So if I speed up time... I harvest these, I get a little bit of resources, right? And then when this triggers, more trees grow, getting me a dead nettle. Oh, dead nettles are negative. So I need to get rid of those. Boom. Because I want all of the pines to be in here. Let's say I put a pine in here, right? And I'm like, hey, pine, 42, 42, 43. Okay, so placing pines does get me. So I can just come back, come over here and be like, yo, I can harvest this out. And it gets me like immediate. But it's, if I leave it full up, I get better passive gains. Okay, kind of getting the hang of things here. And we are positive on wood. We're positive on basically everything. We are positive on grain. They want me to build a coal mine. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Oh, we can make a bakery. Uh, I'll wait until, the, until I get a quest for that. Let's do a coal mine over here. We have we have coal. So if I build a coal mine here, this will negatively affect this pres preservarium, right? Or, or this thing of the forest. Okay, so pollution is bad for preservariums. So I don't want pollution near this thing, which means can I just demolish this and move it. Oh, I got a watchtower unlocked. Oh, I guess this can't be adjacent to any infrastructure, right? I see, I see, I see. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just, I'll harvest all this, scoop, get all those resources, and I'll move the monument to the forest, like all the way over here. And this can be the preserve area. Um, and we'll try to keep pollution away from here. And I'll go ahead and delete this lumberjack area. Okay, so I produce coal, which requires rail transport, which I don't fully understand. So I'm just gonna put that down there and we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Now, in order to get rail, I need to reach 70 population. So let's go ahead and increase our population a little bit. So for the sake of faster multiplication, I'm gonna harvest these pines. Okay, we got rail crossings, but real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a policy here. I'm gonna place some trees. What might grow next? What happens if I place a bunch of pine? Like, I don't know. I'll keep a bunch of pine in there, see what happens. Okay, reach 80 population gets me provision loading and unloading station. Okay, so it's weird that it gave me the rail before I could do anything with it. So I need to build a bunch of houses. Let's get started on that. Ooh, we don't want to build here because it has pollution. Okay, so what does a bakery do? It produces and distributes bread from grain. So I guess what I'll do is I'll put another small farming area over here so I can get grain. And I'll put a grain silo right there so I can get a bakery here and... Well, I guess here. So let's go ahead and start with a small sector of farming. I guess I'll put a wheat farm right there. Now, you don't have wood in the area, but that's fine. You'll be able to get wood. Harvest a wisdom geode. I do like the little bit of a, like, a find a cool thing to get a bonus. Oh, what are you? We got an apple tree. Harvest apple. I now have three apples. So we can get fruit markets now. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to delete a house. Put a fruit market right there. We need to, like, rebuild our society, I think. I'm going to place a whole bunch of apple trees, and I'm just going to do, like, a... A wild harvest over here. Skadoosh. Oh, hey, a geode. 7x wisdom gains. Oh, now you're speaking my language. There's a coal power plant. Let's see what we do over here to make this happen. Okay, so I have a coal loading station now. So I can load coal. And now I have a coal unloading station. And then I need to build a railroad between them. All right, perfect. And I got to transport 10 coal. And now I have a powered sawmill, which produces more wisdom. All right, so we'll build a powered sawmill to see what we can do here. So you consume wood pretty quick here. Let's say we were to build a wood stockpile. I kind of have a vision here of like coal mine, coal mine like three coal mines in a row although is that how i want to do this 
how far do you provide power? Like, can I build a powered sawmill? No, I can only build it inside your radius. Okay. Oh my God, a golden frenzy, 30X? That's crazy. We also got 80 populations. So now we have provision loading. So loads wood, fish, wheat, and grain. Okay, so I can ship wood to the powered sawmills. There's probably like an efficient design that I can do here, but instead of efficiency, I'm just gonna focus on getting a single station going. The powered sawmill is going here. I'm gonna delete my other sawmills. I stopped using as much wood. And I'm gonna delete a little bit of my forestry over here. I don't quite, I don't quite need as much as I did. And I'll set up like a forestry area somewhere else. So I'm going to put lumber at the end of this pathway. This is where you get the lumber. I'm going to have a provision loading station. I got to wait till that's actually built. It's kind of gnarly. This is kind of cool. It's kind of fun. I do have a quest to build a watchtower, but I do have to wait until I generate enough wisdom. Provision unloading station over here. I need the provision loading station. I make a railway over to here and to here like so. I harvest this. I make a neat little, oh, not enough wisdom. Shit, I guess I could build two more sawmills while we wait. I had to reroute my wood around the back of this to get it over to here, but I'm hoping I can get it to this stockpile. All I need to do is to build a bridge and then we're good. Okay, rail bridge in place now. So in theory, wood is now being picked up from over here. I don't know how much gets picked up, but presumably a certain amount. It gets scooped all the way over to here and then dropped. I probably would have been better to bring the coal to where I needed the power, but this is fine. This is making 10,000 wisdom per second at the same consumption rate of these things. But let me go ahead and demolish these. I don't know what my wood rate is, but I do think I should have brought coal to over here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this system, maybe. Honestly, it's probably fine for now. We have everything we need in the one place. So it's really just how fast are we consuming wood? Like, is it reasonable for us to add more powered sawmills? I think it is. We could add like three powered sawmills. I think we can sustain that like pretty easily. And if we can't, you know, the wisdom we'll get will allow us to scale up our wood production and potentially scale that up in a closer location, actually. So my current two policy goals are to build a watchtower or reach 90 population. 90 population will get me a log cabin. I'm kind of tempted to start building like an efficient town layout to begin the process of making like the super block over here like if i if i bring my road make sure we bring it around this stuff for now i'll tell you what we'll do we'll actually build a bridge to get over it so i'm going to go ahead and delete my tax collectors because i'm going to build my new town around the idea that those tax collectors are are in there and the idea here is i'll have like a centralized area where all of the tax collectors have overlap with all of the buildings in the town so that I can maximize it. I think right now I can quite easily sustain four tax collectors. I do have an extra policy now, so I'm gonna put a watchtower, like put it over here. It's kind of a, seems like a fun idea. Okay, so now all of these guys are overlapping the area in the top half of this grid. And so now we just need to make sure that food and stuff can get to all the people inside this grid. And as long as I can get food, like to this wheat market, for example, we can sort of build a hyper optimized place. So I'm gonna I'm lay down a single house with the idea of setting the tone of how I'm gonna get water over there, right? Okay, so we got something called a log cabin, which seemingly improves the efficiency of foresters nearby. Now, I don't know if that ability stacks, but presumably these guys will produce three wood per minute, and then these guys will chop pretty regularly. So we, we should have a positive, net positive wood. We are generating like an absurd amount of wisdom right now through burning wood in these powered sawmills, which is quite fun. I built this like little sector. And the idea here is that every single house in the vicinity of this area is overlapped by four tax collectors. So it's getting a massive negative penalty to that happiness, but I am getting a huge boost to the total amount of taxes that I'm collecting, which is in turn giving me a big multiplier. You can see here I'm getting a 64% multiplier for my tax collection, which is really nice. Also, wisdom geode, yoink. So my hope is that this kind of distributed concentrated system is the way to go. I don't know if it is, but we're gonna try it out. Now, I do also need to fulfill these other guys' needs so that they aren't like super negative happiness. because We don't want them to be negative in happiness. We want them to be relatively happy. So I think the first thing we need to do is to bring wood in here. This consumes one wood per minute, which means it's probably a good idea to put a wood stockpile with like in range of this, then make a lumberjack. 
I guess basically adjacent is fine. And then a forester right here should like fulfill the needs of this site and then the wood will get dropped in here and then the wood will get brought here and that should be fine. We reached 100 population which does give us access to the village house but it gives more housing but it has more demands. Now I'm kind of interested here if I built one of these around here and what, do you, what does it take to make 29 million? Now let's put some village houses like let's put a village house right there and then see how that works out. I'm going to say cut down all the stuff over here that'll be a good idea to fill this stockpile so we can get the wood going. Oh we unlocked the park. Now building this village house it needs recreation it needs recreation before anyone will move into it I think. No 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 doesn't look like it. Ah it needs recreation to be happy. I see it uses bread trout mackerel and apples okay so let's say I built a park here. How how does that recreation fulfill the demand? So now these guys all have heat, which means they could technically be made sadder. So we have a park getting recreation. These guys having recreation is brilliant. Oh my God, they actually really love it. Oh, we could tax the hell out of them. Too bad the tax collector is quite an expensive building. It, it, it's not that It's not that important. There's probably a more efficient way to build this. I suppose we technically don't need to, be go, to go down the center like this. And so we could fit another tax collector in here. And this would have a huge efficiency. Ba boom even though it would lower the happiness. Okay, so it needs recreation, water, and heat. I built a couple of those houses. We got a farmhouse, which improves nearby farms. I'll pop those down there. I, I, I don't think I need more wheat, but I'll, I'll build one just for the sake of it, because you do get 800 million wisdom for building one. And they're pretty expensive. We can unlock a library, which probably will get us more policies, because there is still like a little bit of this whole tech tree in here that, you know, isn't quite fully unlocked. Oh, we got a Billion? How much is a tax collector? 7.8 billion. Yikes. Right, so what are we missing now? We need to get bring wheat over to here. So if I build a utility, a water collector, I need to get wheat. Ah, it needs water. Some sort of water. Okay, perfect. So now we can produce water here. We'll need a granary to bring grain to the town. So I'll go like, I'll do three farms. Three farms should be enough actually to feed the town, I hope. Okay, I build two more village houses so we can fill up this area. Yeah, it looks like houses give way better efficiency. It might be a population thing. Okay, we got the library. So what do you do? Multiplies wisdom gain, stacks multiplicatively. Well, let's just build, oh, well, I guess we put a library there. It sounds like fun. Okay, uh, <laughs> now I'm making like crazy amounts of science. I need to harvest something. Harvest a wisdom geode, give me that. Yeah, we're burping, like we're burring. That's insane. So these houses should be getting basic grain. I'll put the grain silo over here so it's in range of that. And the grain mill over here so that it boosts the farms. And then I guess there's no reason not to build a farmhouse in the area as well. So these now have an efficiency of grain mill, farmhouse, giving a nice boost. So 1.5 per minute is pretty darn good. I don't know if that's enough to satisfy the needs of the area, but I'll go up to nine farms. That should be more than enough to, to sustain this whole area. We also need mackerel. Shouldn't be too hard to get that in there. Let's build the storage for the mackerel. How far can it be away? Oh, we don't actually have a fish distribution center. Well, 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 well. The fish market can go there. Okay, people are super unhappy. Why is this? Hunger. I don't understand which houses are starving. All of them have food. I'm very confused. Well, it might be these houses over here that are starving. Ah, uh, this house here. So these houses are starving. It's because I don't have any bread coming in here. Maybe we're not producing bread fast enough. Okay, it's because I wasn't able to get grain from over here to here. The starvation should start to go away and the happiness should start to increase again. And that'll help me out a little bit. I'm gonna slowly start demolishing the regular houses over here and replacing them with the village houses. And the idea is we will just have an entire area dedicated to making this library better. That 6% gain is insane. Okay, summer of year three. We're getting this to here. We are still in feeding wood for heat. And we have the wheat market. We won't need the wheat market once all these houses are replaced with village houses, which will take a little bit of time. Okay, I'm going to put the ocean fishery here and that should br that should feed the fish market. And I'll build my pathway out here. I don't know how much mackerel I actually need. These produce two per minute. So I'm going to assume that that's a good enough for now. It might be better to put the tax collectors in the not village house place. But that'll be a bridge we cross when we start looking at like proper efficiency analysis. Because the thing that really matters here is this library, which will probably change how we shape the town. Because like, let's say I were to delete this tax collector here and I moved this park into the center one tile and then I deleted the old one. Now in terms of overlap, this building can actually reach another tile out than where it was. And similarly, if I move the wood furnace over a tile, let's say I get rid of this tax collector and I put my wood furnace over here, now it can reach another tile. Like, so we could in theory look to expand our reach slightly in every direction. Just a smidge, just a tiny little of a scooch. And if I go through the process of deleting all the regular houses here, then this wheat market isn't actually necessary. I mean, if, if I delete these two tax collectors, yes, my multi my multiplier goes down a lot, okay? But it means like, for example, this 
bakery. Ooh, I think we're, we're getting somewhere really interesting now that we're starting to look at this kind of more in this kind of efficiency analysis here. This bakery can go here. Right, so you were 73 billion. Does that mean if I demolish a house, do you get cheaper? Hold on. No, it's going to throw down a whole, a whole bunch of houses over here to make people happier. We'll figure that out. So let's put the fruit market here. We'll delete this and we'll put the fish market here instead. I'm going to clean up these roads a little bit and delete that old fish market and this old fruit market. And we'll rebuild those three houses, the three nice houses. Now, when it comes to bringing water in, water is actually pretty cheap to provide at scale from the outside. So if I go ahead and delete this and I put water here and I put water here, now we're covered with two buildings. And I want to say all of the needs of these houses are now covered. We just need to get trout in here. And this is a much more efficient setup if we really consider. So let's kind of like demolish all these and rebuild as we envision. We'll do this kind of a thing. Village houses in the back. It'll it'll take a little while for us to fix our income. But that's fine. We can we can scale up the amount of wood that we're um we're burning to. That'll be it'll all be part of the process. Rebuilding an entire town is a, uh, well, it's a time consuming thing. So this is the efficient library location. We also need an efficient tax collector location. I think we can basically cannibalize the same, the same infrastructure over here because we can always move things around, right? And now these buildings all overlap with the same stuff which is perfect. Nothing inside this box is untouched by our buildings, which is incredibly efficient. And I think it's slightly more efficient here. Now nah, it's all the same, basically. This road enables two tiles that aren't touching a road to be enabled, which is plus two. So by doing this, we get we get plus one house by doing it this way, basically. So this is like what I would consider to be the optimal setup with all the services in the center of the town. And this is maximizing the library. Now we also need to maximize the other thing. So we're going to start with the tax collector. I guess we'll just start it. Well, the cute thing is we can kind of cannibalize the happiness of these guys. Like there's no reason we shouldn't have tax collectors here and here if we're going to have the regular houses also sort of dressing off this area. Can we make these things wider? Another tile as well? I think we can actually. Oh yeah, we totally can make these wider a single tile. And so we will. Okay, sorry. I I'm, I'm still figuring kind of exactly the structure I want here, but that's a process, right? It's a, it's, we're, we're figuring out how do I build an efficient layout here? Okay, so we've got grain being produced over here. It's getting turned into, yeah, it's getting turned into grain. Then it's getting turned into bread in the bakery. That hits this entire zone. Everything is perfectly overlapped. Let's go ahead and clean up. Which direction is it better for this to come from this road? Don't actually think it makes a difference here. This inner road might make a difference though. Yeah, if I add two roads here, I block a house space, I block a house space, so I don't actually end up with a more efficient use of the land, which means maybe there is a road position that unlocks more houses than it deletes. Because if you imagine all of this inside space is inaccessible, right? And so I want to place roads in a way that actually adds up to a net positive number of houses. So like if I place a road here, I get one, two, three adjacent tiles, right? Three more adjacent tiles are now housed for the cost of a single tile. So that's plus two. So then if I place a thing here, I lose a tile and gain two tiles. So that's positive. But if I place here, the only new tile is this one. So that the net plus housing is the same. And then I want to connect to the closest thing. And basically, this might actually be efficient. And I only lose this corner house, but I can gain that with a little, little thing like that. I think this might actually be efficient here. So this setup is very, very efficient. I'm it's kind of hard to explain why, but it just is. So now we need to get our multiplier really, really high, which means we need to get our tax collection rate really, really high. So we need to get a bunch of housing over here. I'm having more ideas about where I can place these tax collectors to benefit both from this housing area and from the other one I'm going to build. And I think this is the way, halfway between the two. I'm going to demolish this, harvest all these, and then place my monument to the forest here instead. I'll make sure to put a few apple trees along the north side. Okay, so I've got four tax collectors over here and I need to optimize this. Let's get ourselves some water in a sort of similar place. I guess I could do it one tile to the right. So let's say we put a fruit market right there, just for the sake of it because that's what these can be fed with. They can be fed with fruit. Now let's also add in a park slightly closer. That'll bring the happiness up. And then a, a bakery and the bakery will require will require heat. But technically the heat could be provided from the outside like the water if we really wanted to. So this is the city limits for this area as well. Like this is the maximal extent that all of these shops can reach cooperatively. So I'm wondering, is there anywhere I can place the wood furnace that would hit the entirety of the inside? Well, actually there is, which will 
potentially change the optimization of this area over here when I come back to it. But I really need to build this area so I can get my happiness sorted. A lot of my people are starving and unhappy. So we just got to fix that just by getting houses in this area. Okay, nice. We just unlocked the sheep pen, which is kind of a cool idea. It's a fluff in a fence. I guess I'll just put one over here because I don't know what they do, but this will give us access to the shearer once we build it. We'll get five billion dollar doodles. Okay, so we get the shearer and then we get the millennier. Okay, 25% efficiency. I don't understand why I get that 25% efficiency. It's like quite confusing. Uh, the millennier distributes hats. Okay. So the sheep just produces wool, it seems, over time. And then you turn that wool into, wait, what is, what is this? Okay, the sheep pen increases the shearer's productivity, I see. And you distribute hats, which makes people happier. And you're making one hat per minute. Oh, we just unlocked the town hall. Interesting. Allows spending policies on upgrades. Well, I guess we'll, we'll put the town hall here. Plus 100 town hall happiness. Let me retool how we do this wood furnace stuff. And I'll move that town hall where it, it only provides happiness to this type of house, which is perfect. Now these are like giga happy houses. Probably means I can tax them to the hilt so we can get upgrades. Legacy. Each prestige levels grants you plus one to all wisdom gains. Okay, boom. The first contact plus 10% wisdom gains. So I don't know what all these do. Okay, so this is like the meta progression. I don't know what the negative red zone here means. Um, so I'm going to build two sheep things next to each other to see what that does. Okay, so I have a ton of sheep over here. I don't know if this like matters. He's getting a 400%. So he's producing five per minute, which is great because that feeds a single thing. A uh, single shearer? What is it? A millionaire, a, di a hat distribution center. So I'll place a, pl a few shearers here and then I'll place a similar number of millionaires. I have absolutely no idea how to distribute hats. Okay, a hat got distributed, which is meant we have a very small boost to happiness. That's nice. Okay, hats. Okay. All right, it's kind of starting to work now. I'm starting to kind of, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of the idea of what's going on here. All right, so I've got four shearers producing about 5.3 per minute and I have four millennials producing, consuming about five per minute. So it's roughly even distribution, production, so on and so forth, which is good. We're getting hats and I'll get 7 billion for distributing hats. I do need to increase my population. Now, these guys are not super happy because they are getting taxed. My multiplier is super good. It's a 1.4 million percent. We also did just get the river dock because winter began and I want to build the, the river River dock. Oh, no, I guess I guess over here is fine. We'll do a few of those river docks. And then we can get the river fishery. And then if I put another river fishery here, we should be able to transport goods between them. So if I do like, this is an unloading station. Well, I have to wait till it's built. But we now have trout and then we can distribute that trout to this area of my, my new town, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to load wood here and I guess I will unload it here. I'll make a quick hole in these trees and then we'll put a provision unloading station right there so we can drop the wood off into this stockpile. It'll get scooped up and dropped off and all these wood burners will have access to it bringing heat and glory. And we don't have a grain silo over here either. So next thing I'm going to bring in is going to be the trout. I'll load it up here. Okay, my people are super happy and I guess if I increase my population they will get... I will get more cool stuff. So these type of houses are becoming a little bit too expensive for me. Technically, I have all of these needs fulfilled. Okay, I have a bakery, I have a fruit stand, they have heating. So I can just go ahead and expand the housing in this area. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll see how the population starts to respond to what we're doing. So now we've got a loading station. Um, two different river fisheries and uh, it unloads over here at this dock. So they could take like a big fat stack of fish over here. So we should have a pretty steady supply of fish here. We are at 180 population, 190 population, we've got a trillion, which is kind of exciting. So really what we need to do is we need to get this number up, the, the multiplier. So building up the, the base amount of powered sawmills that we have and the base number of tax collection we have, I think it's going to be part of that goal. Now, if I were to put a road here, I would get access to two more things. So I do think that's worth it. So instead, if I demolish this house and I built a road here and here, I would get access to three more houses that I didn't have access to before. Okay, that seems okay. And so I'll do the same on the other side. We'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then if I demolish this and I put this to here, I get access to three more houses. So I trade one house for three, which seems really efficient and then we have these like random holes which I guess we could plug by doing this just to make things look a little bit more nice not that niceness is actually that important 
but these tax collectors are just churning out wisdom, which is fantastic. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and demolish some of these houses. Yes, that is the goal. We're going to demolish those houses so that we can basically do the same thing on this side. And by placing all these houses, we can in theory maximize things. I'm just going to chop out those few houses there and then we'll kind of maximize this population in here. Now we might have a little bit of a dip in happiness resulting in homelessness, but as these things are built, we should start to see a return of people's happiness. Um, we should also be able to sneak in another tax collector over there. Okay, so we don't have homeless people anymore, but we are fulfilling the needs of people in here very well, right? We have like the basics, no heat. We're not getting enough wood to this stockpile. Why is that? Because we're not filling this stockpile fast enough. Got it. Well, why is that? Is it our foresters or lumberjacks are not fast enough? Okay, let's build a more efficient lumberjack area. So starting here, I'll have a few lumberjacks. Oh, these are wheat markets, damn it. I want lumberjacks going across. I'll do three for now. I'll kind of clear these out, harvest this whole shenanigans. Spring, year three. So if we have the foresters overlap exactly like this, I can put a log cabin here and a log cabin here, and then a lumberjack there to capture all of this one, a lumberjack here to capture all of this one and then we can have an extra two kind of doing its thing and this way these guys are a hundred percent extra productive so we can have more lumberjacks per forester so this should be a wood production powerhouse this area here so we want to cut down the trees as fast as they grow basically so i'm thinking in four lumberjacks on each side of the two log cabins that should spawn enough wood missions to keep this fulfilled. So everyone in here should have heat, which is what we need. And we, we, can, we can repurpose this wood industry over here to actually feed these powered sawmills. That'll be kind of the potential eventual goal potential eventual. So you got this really nice housing area here. Yeah, so this kind of layout is actually super efficient, right? We're, we're constantly chopping all the trees. Everything is maxed out. The the four, the 16 wood per minute that we're producing here is constantly being harvested um, at maximum rate. So never a moment where the trees aren't getting, you know, chopped, chopped, which is perfect. So we've, we've got the wood throughput here handled. Also, I was totally meant to like stop playing this game at some point. This is, I, I am not sponsored or anything for this. I just, I actually got addicted while I, while I was sitting here and that's a really good sign for a game is if I, if I, if I'm just trying it out and I get addicted, you've got a great game. So I need to fix my hunger problem. I'm going to put a well right here and then I'm going to put all sorts of farms in here, but that does mean I will need a pathway up to here, I think for efficiency sake, which will also require me to make a rail crossing, which I, I don't think I've actually had in my town doing, doing the thing. So I'm going to turn this into a little farmland and this little farmland, my goal is to make it super efficient with a combination of a grain mill and a couple of farmhouses. So we're going to put down these wheat farms right now. This granary right here, and we want a loading station to bring the wheat to feed this town to here. So we're currently producing one wheat per minute on all of these. I don't know how fast we're using wheat. Now, one problem we have is actually the efficiency of the road from the granary to this wheat market is really inefficient because they have to walk all the way around. So I think for the sake of making things slightly more efficient, I'm going to designate this as a through road, which will require a little bit of a change to the setup. It's nice to have a through road at some point. So we'll lose a couple of houses in this area. Actually, the through road should be away from the tax collectors, but it's too late now. We've already done it. These houses are no longer starved, which is what we want. 93 extra hat happiness from distributing hats. That's really nice. I'll put a farmhouse here just for the sake of getting a slightly more efficient setup here. But this handles the wheat to this area. And honestly, do they need to be happier than that? Like once they're fed, I don't think I need much more happiness than that. I mean, it is nice to have extra happiness, right? Don't get me wrong. But I think I would really like to rebuild this area so I can consume more wood willy nilly. So I think what I'm gonna do is gonna delete this, delete this put my coal power plant here instead. And now let's start with a ton of powered sawmills in the area. I'm trying to think what's the most efficient way to get the right number of powered sawmills in this zone. This current setup will let me get four powered sawmills in here. One, two, three, four. Now we will want a wood stockpile. So I want a provision unloading station there. That's fine. We can make that work. I did delete a lot of wood to get that to work. I cannot explain how much joy I'm getting just from like doing this. This is Awesome. So we're picking up wood from here now and we're scuttling it on over here to be deposited. And then once we can get all of these powered sawmills going, I'm trying to think about how I can get even more of these powered sawmills in this zone to uh, maximize our output. I think it's got to look something a little bit like this. I reckon if we delete these two tiles and we place a coal unloading station here, we can kind of make it slightly more efficient, I guess. Well, 
Technically, we don't want to do that because what we actually want to do is have the coal unloading station here because a single one of these um, coal mines can actually sustain two coal power plants. So that's probably the better way to do things would be to actually extend things with a rail crossing, do a, do a pretty similar thing, but have this be like another sector of sawmills. I think that is actually just strictly better. And the idea here is if we can get our baseline amount of wisdom production up, um, all of the multipliers that we're getting should really start to pay off. If we can get enough wood into this stockpile and then enough wood from this stockpile to over here. So now we're making four-ish billion per second. Let's save up for another library, 0 0.01 trillion per second. Now that feels good. So I'll put a library right there, which should get us now for the 4.3 million percentage boost. And this should now even get better as we add more and more houses to this area. The libraries are now quintillions. Oof. But the more ha the more houses we get in range of this, um, the faster that number will grow. It looks like we actually got a new policy in here. So let's have a look. Let's grab first contact, which has given us a 10% boost to all wisdom gains and an extra prestige. And it looks like we got to go through and grab all these boxes of wisdom. I'm going to rework this whole wood area to increase throughput. So now we've got a battery of log cabins in the center that are improving these foresters up to 200%. So producing 7.5 wood per minute. And then we've got a whole host of lumberjacks in the area that are consistently chopping down all the wood that's being produced. And then that wood is getting stored in this stockpile. So it looks like now we're overproducing wood and we can't get it over here fast enough. So I'm going to add a second stockpile and a second provision loading station um, to increase the throughput. I'll have to delete this tower. Although it is tempting to leave it deleted to uh, gain more of these. So we'll have to do a little kind of rework here. We'll connect things up slightly differently. Put a nice bridge in there and then an unloading station. And now we're, we should, in theory, but in theory, we're getting twice as much wood through because we have two carts delivering rather than a single. So that means all of these sawmills are now producing a lot of baseline numbers of wisdom that's going through all my multipliers, right? We've got all those delicious, delicious. We've got happiness, tax collector, pine. Um, there's even a little bit of dead nettle in here. Oh, what is this? An acacia. Oh, okay. Um, I got acacia saplings. Let me place a few of those and then I'll harvest like this sector. I'll kind of see what, what comes of this now. I'm going to harvest a wisdom geode. I would see it. I found it. I found it. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're cranking out wood. We're getting enough wood over here to hopefully keep all of these producing. And we do, in fact, have enough to get ourselves another delightful library that I'm going to plop right here. Oh, that's capital Q. Oh, wow. Let's make it one capital Q per second. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, holy shit. This old sector of the town is still churning but this now the fact that this whole sector is running kind of makes me want to set up another powered sector so i'm going to go ahead and pop in a little coal unloading station skadoosh and let me just do the same thing right we, we get ourselves some powered sawmills and the idea is basically the exact same these sawmills will be powered generating a really high baseline which will allow us to retool our existing buildings to be more efficient and this is the whole gameplay loop man and it's super addictive it's super fun i can't believe like this is idle games taken to the limit man um, I love it. I'm really enjoying it. All right, let's go ahead and grab the Box of Wisdom 1. That is a 15% boost to all wisdom gains. On top of our prestige, it's all it's coming along nicely. We can get another library, an 18% 18, 18 more efficient library. We're just going to constantly see these numbers jumping now as we build, 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 build. Ooh, we're up to the S's. Nice. Or 0. Point whatever S per second. Because we're just, as we build and we build and we build and we build, the things get crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier. For the sake of, like, ensuring productivity here, I'm going to go ahead and just add another coal mine. I wonder if I can make these loading stations more efficient by putting a stockpile on each side. Because maybe that will recruit more people to pick up the wood that we're cutting down and then i wonder maybe it's worth it to increase the number of foresters here so the total number of trees generated is really high let's grab another box of wisdom hopefully increasing our wisdom gains kind of curious if i change how this is laid out can i get more than one cart like if i have a loop do i get more carts no it looks like you only get one which is annoying i feel like i should get more so that means i'm actually doing this the opposite of the way that i want to do it what i want is two unloading stations per thing. 
So let's build a wood station. Okay, so now I'm gonna have four carts coming across here, delivering, um, which means I'm gonna need three stockpiles to receive. It's a, it's a little bit of a, like a math kind of thing. You gotta, I, you gotta calculate in your head, but there is like a sort of satisfaction to, you know, controlling it. So now I'm gonna be setting up these lines, these collection lines from the wood area to the processing area. So it'll take a little bit of time for my people to kind of figure out where they need to go and what they need to do. And I have kind of demolished a, a large sector of housing here because I need to continue to expand and this housing area. That'll be something I look into and, and try to get going. It's a process, it's a process. Now, honestly, it might be easier to ship the coal over to a sawmill area, like legitimately. And so now I'm like seriously thinking of just like pressing V and deleting this whole sector. And I actually think it's the right move because it should be a lot simpler now that I've thought about this to have the wood processing area over here and then ship coal to it. I had kind of thought of that earlier, but I didn't, I, I, I didn't commit to it, but I should have. So I'll put coal power here and I'll space them out to where they don't overlap. And we can easily supply these three. I rebuilt a little bit of housing over here. Now they're not gonna be really fed very well. That's the downside, but these guys still can access the grain over here at least, which is nice. So at least we won't deal with a, too much starvation bringing us down. Okay, I've had to redesign this area a couple times. But I've got the hang of it now. We could fit about three power stations in here pretty comfortably and hit basically all of the powered mills in there, with the exception of these ones here. So I'm just gonna cut those off with a line. I'm like Omega addicted to this game, dude. It's not even funny. I'm supposed to go to bed. It's like nearly midnight. Right, I've demolished entire sectors of my economy so that I can rebuild it over here in basically the same way that I built it originally here. Now we were up to like plus 100 Q or whatever it was, like capital Q. So all we gotta do now is, is kind of bring up the, the, the housing situation to a more normal status. And in this way, building this specific pattern, I can maximize the number of things that are in range of like my parks, which is really, really nice. Honestly, happiness in here isn't even that important anymore because I'm getting so many other sources of happiness. All I need is people to be fed, which is honestly a little bit grim that the game is encouraging me to do that. So it looks like hat distribution is like on a yearly basis. I'm wondering if I can increase my hat distribution. Also, I need to build more of these nice houses in the nice area. I think, right, that's the plan. Throw down as many of these as we could afford. That's about it. This should get us a nice boost to library income. I'll go ahead and demolish this, place down another library in this area. We're getting really good efficiency on those libraries. About to hit 280 population, looking good. Let's get the upgrade, we're wisdom three, boom. Our multiplier is up to 500 capital Q. But I, I really do think I should go do something else with my time, like go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, you know, it's a it's an amazing cross between like an idle game, an optimization game, a factory game. It's, it's got everything that you want, really. It, this is probably the best idle game ever made. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.